Could this radio be the Baofeng killer? Let's find out. Welcome to House Ham. I'm Bob, WB7W, and I've been doing this channel for a little over a year now, and I still kind of get excited when a company reaches out to me to do a review. All right, Bob, calm down. They sent this thing out to just about every YouTuber they can find. You're nothing special. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at this analog handheld that's been making the YouTube rounds. The TalkPod A36 Plus is a new Chinese dual-band HT that's kind of a competitor to the Baofeng UV5R and other radios like it. But this one has a few extras like a color screen, USB-C charging, and air band receive. Now, do these things justify twice the cost of a Baofeng? Well, that will depend on you. Only you will know if you want to spend the extra money for these features or not. Let's take a look at what you get in the box. You get the radio, a 1500 milliamp hour battery that can be charged by USB-C. This is a feature we're starting to see in a lot of newer radios, and I have to say, I think it is a great trend. In 2023, I think all new radio batteries hitting the market should adopt this feature. It means that if you already have a USB-C device, you'll also be able to charge your HT batteries. Now, if you don't already have some USB-C stuff, you're not, because it does come with a USB-C cable and a little charger. It also comes with a charging cradle, and get this, you plug it directly into the wall without a wall ward. I really like this too. If you're like me and have a power strip for all your handhelds, the strip is usually a kludge of wall warts that don't really fit nicely into most standard strips. I don't know why more manufacturers don't do this. It comes with a user manual, and although the print is really small, I mean really small, so small in fact that even my reading glasses weren't enough, I had to resort to a magnifying glass. Fortunately, you won't need it too much. It comes with a programming cable. This is something that most radios do not come with, but it's not a standard FTDI cable, so you have to download their driver and CPS software to use it. If you prefer, you can program this radio with Chirp, but you're going to need to get an FTDI cable. If you have a Baofeng cable, that will work, but I like this cable set that Josh over at Ham Radio Crash Course recommended doesn't cost too much more than your standard Baofeng FTDI cable, and it can be used with a lot of different radios as it has all these adapter ends. I've put a link in the description if you want to get one of these for yourself. Now, the first time you fire up this radio, it is initially programmed to transmit only on the GMRS frequencies, but that is easily remedied by holding the PTT and 8 buttons while you're turning on the radio. This will put it in expanded mode. You can put it back into the standard you know, GMRS mode by holding the PTT and two buttons while you turn it on. This doesn't appear to have a ham profile in this firmware like it did when Steve, KM9G, reviewed it. So please understand that this will allow you to transmit on frequencies that you do not have privileges for. So be careful not to push that PTT where you shouldn't. This does have a nice color screen that is easily readable. One thing they did away with from the standard Baofeng style radio is the LED flashlight at the top. It doesn't bother me at all. I've never used it and I find it kind of annoying. So this is a welcome change in my book. One nice feature to this radio is the ability to receive on the air band. And the reason that most HTs don't do this isn't so much the frequency range of 118 to 137 megahertz but that airband uses AM instead of FM. They've also included standard broadcast FM radio receive and no weather radio channels that can easily be listened to. The menu system is pretty similar to Baofeng, although it does show a couple of options at a time as you scroll through them. One thing I found counterintuitive and quite annoying was the buttons are backwards. In other words, if you want to go down to the next lower option, you have to press the up arrow button, and vice versa. So how does this thing perform? I did a test of it using a local repeater, and I got a great signal report. Now, I've not tested this for spectral purity, but Josh over at Ham Radio Crash Course did, and he found it to be about the same as a Baofeng. So you may want to keep in mind that this will likely put out some spurious emissions. All in all, I think this is a pretty nice upgrade over a Baofeng-style radio. 
with some very nice features, and it's small and light. The USB-C charging is also a welcome addition, so is it worth twice the price of a Baofeng? I think with the added features, they justify the additional cost, particularly the USB-C chargeable battery, but you may feel differently. It's nice to know you have options in the sub-$50 range. So the question you may be asking, should I buy one of these for myself? Understand that it is likely does not meet the FCC spurious emission standards for Part 97 on VHF, but there again, neither does Baofeng. The decision is really up to you. If you want to be 100% legal, I would go with one of the other options like a Yaesu FT65R. It's a few bucks more than this, but it meets all of the FCC standards right out of the box. Do you do want to get one of these for yourself? There is a link in the description below. It is an affiliate link, so if you buy using it, I do get a small stipend. You pay the same either way, but it does help to support the channel. If you don't want to use it, that's fine too. You can just search for the radio yourself. I would like to know what you think about this radio compared to Baofeng style radios, so please leave a comment below with your thoughts. I hope you found this helpful, and if you did, please give it a like as it helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing so you know when the next video comes out. Till next time, 73.